In this webcast, I'd like to show you how to use the JMOL interface and your wiki page to create active applets, which are JMOL applets that have buttons connected to them. With an active applet, you can build one JMOL window with multiple views of the same model in that JMOL window. This might save you some time down the road and it will make it more efficient for users of your web page to see different aspects of a single JMOL model. Before we get to that, I just wanted to remind you really quickly about the attachments menu associated with your wiki page. You can use the attachments on your wiki page as a sort of repository for all the files that you'll need to work with. If ever you need to access the URL or the location of a file, you can always right click on its link from this page, click on copy link or copy link location, and on your clipboard will now be the location of that file. If you're ever working on the JMOL interface and you run out of time, you can always save state file, attach it back to your wiki page using the attachments page, and then grab the URL later and load it back in the JMOL interface to start where you left off. Now let's take a look at a small molecule similar to what you might work with on your project and how we might think about making an active applet out of this molecule. The molecule you're looking at is tetracycline, and it's an acne medication, among other things. What's important about the molecule chemically is that it possesses a wide variety of ionization states. In other words, there are several positions on the molecule that could be either protonated or deprotonated. So you'll notice at the top of the molecule, we have a tertiary amine, and this could very easily be protonated in the presence of some mildly acidic hydrogens. We could also deprotonate at some of the hydroxyl groups around the structure. So we could deprotonate at this hydroxyl group, or over here, or even perhaps right here. We'd like to show all of these ionizable positions and perhaps the pKa's associated with each, and we could do this by labeling each position, but one nicer way to do it would be to label each position only when the user wants to see that position labeled. Using the Active Applet Maker, we could create buttons associated with each of these ionizable functional groups and have the buttons turn on pKa labels, zoom, and other features that highlight just that functional group. To build an active applet, we'll need to use both the Tools History menu and the Tools Active Applet panel. The history shows you the JMOL commands that have been executed on the model. Every time you click a button on the interface, a corresponding command is executed, and those are listed here. You can mark the history so you can determine the effects a particular button has on the model and the commands that are run when that button is clicked. Using the Active Applet panel, you can add or remove what we call state buttons to the model. When you add a button, it starts out with no actions associated with it. To give it an action, just hover over it, give it a custom name, and then type commands into the text box below. Don't worry if you don't know what commands to type. The JMOL scripting language is a complex beast, and we'd like you to keep your focus on chemistry throughout the semester. So, we've tried to make it as easy as possible for you to copy and paste commands executed by the interface when you click various buttons in the interface, and this is accomplished by using the history panel. Whenever you click a button on the interface, an entry is provided in the history panel. In our case, we'd like to label the protons with their pKa, and so this suggests that we should use the labels and echo panel. Remember, though, that you always need to select atoms to act on before you can apply labels or do anything else in JMOL. That's where the get current select command button comes in. You can select atoms in the normal way in the JMOL window and then use get current select command to print out the select command that you would use to select that atom. This is almost always going to be one of the first commands that you execute for a button that you're putting together. The very first thing we want to do is select the atom whose pKa we want to show. With this done, now we'd like to label the button, and that suggests the Labels and Echo panel. Let's clear the history out, and then click Apply Label and see what commands get executed. All we should have to do is just copy this command, come back to the associated commands box, and paste it in. Let's say we'd also like to move the view so that we focus in on just that phenol group. We can do this by using the history in conjunction with the Structure View Information panel 
and moving the JMOL to the position where we'd like it to be. We can move the JMOL and zoom in just on that phenolic position. And now when we click Show Orientation, a command is given by JMOL that will move the window to that particular view. So once again, we can copy and paste that command into the associated commands box. And now we're ready to bind these commands to the button. When we click Bind, now whenever that button is clicked, those commands will execute and we'll get the view that we just set up. So we can clear selection, we could even turn off labels, and now when we click Show PKA, the JMOL window moves and we've labeled that position. With our active applet in place, now we need to export it to a form that can be embedded on the wiki. To do this, we need to put it in its own HTML page. But before we do that, we need to make sure that the JMOL is in a form that we want it to appear when the user first loads the page. In other words, we want to get rid of the label and clear the selection and orient the molecule so that all of it is showing. To do that, I'm going to clear labels, and that also cleared the selection, and then I'm going to use the mouse to reorient the molecule. Now we're ready for export. To export, go to the Tools, Active Applet menu, and hit Generate Applet Code. This is going to give you some HTML code that you'll then paste into a text file in order to get your HTML page out. If you're on a Mac, you can use TextEdit, and if you're on a PC, you can use Notepad. If you do use TextEdit, though, make sure when you first pull it up that you go to Format, Make Plain Text. This will prevent any extra text from being embedded when you save the page. Paste the text in and save it. Give your HTML file a descriptive name with the semester in which you did the project, your group number, and then a name for the active applet itself. Be sure to end the file name in .html. The final step is to upload this web page to Butane, the chemistry server. Use the upload control at the bottom of the active applet panel to do this. When the upload is complete, you'll see Upload Successful at the top of the page. You'll be given a link to the active applet HTML page itself, and then some code that you can use on the wiki. And wherever you'd like to place your active applet, all you have to do is copy and paste this code. You may need to adjust the width and height attributes if your active applet is a little bit bigger or smaller than usual.